All right, all right, Israel. Check this out. Now, uh, I've been getting a lot of reports back uh, from some several sisters, brothers as well, that there are some problems in the church up at St. Louis with Mr. Hebrew One. Hebrew one. All right, now, he, uh, our sister Kanye, let me say shalom to you, sister Kanye, uh, and some other sisters too, Shamaya, sister uh, Diana, um, all of these sisters um, came and, and, and spake unto me concerning a misunderstanding at the very least that Mr. Hebrew one, Daniel Solomon, and whoever in the hell else that you all have going on whereby you think the new the, the Gentiles in the New Testament are heathen. Now I must pose this question. Is that really the case? Because I understand a lot of brothers uh, uh, desire to uh, separate themselves from camp doctrines. So in doing so, they have only uh, succumbed to greater misunderstanding out the fire into the frying pan type thing. You see that? But we're gonna get some clarity uh, on this situation. First, we wanna go ahead and hear a little bit of what happened on your talk show. So we can make sure that, that there is no question about whether or not these are credible um, concerns. And we'll just leave it at that. Say shalom to your brothers, you know what I mean? I have a voice to stay by the ship by Yahweh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, you and I are who we speaking with. Talking to you. How you doing, brother? Feeling good like a Hebrew should. How you doing, Arjalan, this morning? Uh, and let me say shalom to you. Grace and peace be unto you, uh, Arjalan, brother Arjalan. Uh, I ain't talked to you in a minute. Definitely, I'll be hitting you up, no doubt, Lord will. Now, let's read. Let's continue on. I'm all right. You all right, Angela? What's going on, Hebrew? How you doing? Uh, I'm all right. Good, good. Talk to us. How you doing, Daniel Salma? Doing okay, Angela. Okay. Yeah, when, when, I called you, when I called you the other day, you was awful sleepy. You had ain't good, huh? So that I just well, went on you. Tobias, how you doing? I'm feeling good, like a Hebrew shear brother yourself. Oh, uh, I'm all right. Now that we got, uh, the, we got the pleasantries out the way, talk to us. <laughs> yeah, for real, Hebrew <laughs> Distressing your voice, bro. You seen y'all, but we heard otherwise. I think he's still asleep, brother Jacob. How y'all brothers doing this morning? We doing good, sister Kanya. How you doing this morning, Coach? All is well. All is well, sister Kanya. Brother Jacob, we were calling in this morning because I wanted you to read a couple of scriptures for me regarding the sister that was killed by those heathens. Okay. I have um, Joshua 23, 11 through 13. And I also have Ezekiel 35, verse 5, and then Revelations 20, verses 7 through 9. Let's start with that Joshua 23, Akoti. Give me them verses again. Um, 23. Now let's stop it for a minute. See, now the sister uh, asked you all to go over a couple scriptures with her. Okay. And as this conversation goes on, that never happened. Eleven through thirteen. All right, Joshua chapter twenty-three, eleven through thirteen. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God. Else, if ye do not, yes, if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you, and shall make marriage with them, and go in unto them, and they to you, 
know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your side and thorns in your eyes until you purge from off this good land, which the Lord your God have given you. Let's stop right there. Now, Joshua is uh, addressing the matter of Israel not going back into the way of the heathen. And the judgment of the heavenly father that he'll bring down on their ass if they listen not. I am listening. Now you would think that's enough. Why do you think it is, brother? She asking you about this. Let's go over here to Ezekiel 35, she said. Give us that next script, Akoti. The next one is Ezekiel 35, verse 5. Ezekiel 35. In verse five, and it reads, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword at the time of their calamity and the time of their iniquity had an end. And you have one more. So perpetual hatred that Esau, who most of us, many of us, think is the white man matters not they all getting the same punishment why is she bringing this up so now because of this perpetual hatred the question becomes why in the hell would they be in the congregation with us you see that let's go and then revelations 20 verses 7 through 9 revelations 20 7 yes seven through nine and it reads and when a thousand years are expired satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth gog and magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea keep going see tell them why you wanted them scriptures read a call First of all, the Most High already gave us warning about these heathens. We are in the land of our captivity. We're not supposed to be making marriages with them. We're not supposed to be hanging around them. We're not supposed to be doing anything with them outside of our book. We get caught up in these situations with these heathens. First of all, this is just my opinion. If this sister, because I see it all the time on my job, was hanging around this many heathens, she was a straight up coon. I don't care how you try to slice it because I see it all the time. She was a coon. You hung around them and then they killed you. But the most already warned us about hanging around these people and making marriages with them and, and just hanging on to them for what? They have already showed you they have a perpetual hatred for us. Even with Stop right there. She asked a brilliant question. She said, for what? Now the reports that I get back are dis disturbing to say the least. That you niggas have heathen in the congregation. And they testify that the reason, some of the reason at least, is because you perceive it to be, misperceive it to be, that the Gentiles in the so-called New Testament are other nations, heathen, non-Israelite nations. So that means you all, whether you mean to or not, and that's the only reason why I ain't handling y'all niggas fucked up right now because I have not been able to determine that this is something that you all are doing on purpose, like all of these camp niggas that I flat out destroy at the word of the heavenly father, all praise to the heavenly father, you see that? So now we are gonna get some edification, but first let us make certain that we understand what the stakes are here. Right out the scriptures, KJ Vizzle. Proverbs 15 and 10, and it will read, Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. I'm listening. Is there any mistake in, in what we just read? So it said again, correction is grievous. 
unto him that forsaketh the way. Have you niggas forsaken the way? Is this correction going to be grievous? We will find out. Lord will. And he that hateth reproof shall die. Woo! I hope you brothers don't hate reproof. Daniel, I guess you're supposed to be the man that handles all the scriptures. Hebrew 1, you, I guess you give the sense, like it tell us in Nehemiah in the eighth chapter. When we read out the scriptures, we also give the sense to cause the people to understand. So you have caused the people to misunderstand because you gave the wrong sense. You say, you think, you perceive it to be that the Gentiles, that we just same niggas, we just same motherfuckers we just read about. Perpetual hatred, they still gonna fight even after the thousand year millennial reign when Hasatan is let loose back out here to deceive the nations. That these same people belong in your congregation and that they are the Gentiles in the New Testament. We're gonna knock that shit out the box in two seconds. I share this wisdom with all Israel. Don't take a lot, all right? Joel 2.27, you familiar with it? Let's run it. Joel 2.27. Let's get it right quick. Where are we, Joe? Joel 2.27. Where the hell is it? Right there. Joel 2.27. All right, here it is. Apologies for the delay. It says, and ye shall know, Mr. Hebrew 1 and Daniel Solomon, that I, the Lord Yahweh, am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord Yahweh, your Elohim, that's possessive, your Elohim, and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now you would think that's enough. You see that? But we know, just like Gog in time of Gog and Magog after the thousand year millennial reign, and the Hasatan is allowed to come back out here and to deceive the nations. He deceived them the first go around on this end. So the nations, the other nations and many of the nations of Israel perceive it to be that the Gentiles in the New Testament are other nations, heathen nations. Well, seeing we just read that, that he's the father, the Elohim, the God, of Israel and none else. I don't know why that wasn't enough, but I guess again, Hasatan, in your own mind, that is, caused people to think something to change. I understand where we got it from because we've been under the boot of that so called white man. So now let's go to Romans in the third chapter. Romans 3 and 29, it says, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Paul answers, yes, of the Gentiles also. Let's read it one more time. Listen up good, Daniel Solomon and Hebrew 1. Not run your mouth. It says, is he the God of the Jews only? That's the question. Thought Joel just answered that already. Why in the hell is this being asked? I don't know, but it is. So Paul suffered your ass to answer the question. It says, is he not also of the Gentiles? Thought it just said and none else. So who are these Gentiles? It says, Paul answers, yes, of the Gentiles also. Intelligent men. 
What do you gather from that? I'm listening. You gather from that, that then the conclusion is, unless the heavenly father is a liar at the mouth of Joel or Joel, then these Gentiles in the New Testament must be Israel. There are no two ways about it. There's nothing else that need to be said. Either you must call the heavenly father a liar, because he said, I am in the midst of Israel, I am your God and none else. Or these Gentiles must be Israel, because when they asked, when the question was bring, brought, before, uh, brought before Paul, is he the God of the, of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Paul said, yes, unless Paul is a lie. Which one? Is it Joel? Is it the Heavenly Father? Is it Paul? Hamashak? He taught Paul everything that he knows. Matthew in the 28th chapter, 18 through 20th verse. He taught them whatever so things he commanded them is what they're to teach. Whatsoever things he commanded them. So did he command uh, Joel to, I mean, uh, Paul to lie and answer that question uh, in falsehood? No, he said the Gentile, the God of the Gentiles also. So if he's the God of, the, of Israel and none else, and also the God of the Gentiles, that's a lockdown that the Gentiles are Israel. No two ways about it, brother. Again, correction is grievous unto them that forsake the way. All right. So now let's go get over here and um, let's uh, let's grab a couple of other instances, not just scriptures, which I call understandings. This not a Winnie the Pooh book. This is life. These words are life. How my shock told you. So if you ain't got them, you got death. That's why if that's why if you don't uh if you hate the reproof, the correction, you shall die. So I expect to hear you niggas coming and clearing this up live on your radio station. That's supposed to be the most dangerous show on the earth. Talk show on the earth. To make correction and tell all of Israel that you were wrong. And come to terms with the fact that in your error, you have caused the people to err. Oh, it might be a little, guess what? We pass out this kind of edification, this kind of rebuking, reproofing, I should say, all the time, wherever it's needed. And if I had to go down the list of all Israel, which I couldn't get through, and check them off one by one and pay their ass a visit, just like the, our brothers and fathers, Paul and them, were paying niggas visits, jumping in ships, riding on the waves. You see that? To bring uh, understanding and correction unto niggas. We do the same. All right? So now let's go over here to uh, the book of Ezra. It's called the so-called Old Testament. Ain't shit old about it. But whatever, we'll suffer you. Ezra in the ninth chapter, and hear the thing good. Daniel Solomon, you the man that do all of the, I guess, uh, conveying of what the scriptures is saying. Hebrew one, I guess all you do is say, get them, Daniel. Well, won't you say, get them, Radawa? Destroy Yah. I got it. I'll read for you. Ninth chapter of Ezra, 14th verse, and it reads, you know, go read that ninth chapter. And it says, should we again break thy commandments and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? What is that? What is thou? What is not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us? So that there should be no remnant, 
nor escaping? That's the question of the day when they are convening. Let's read it one more time. Should we again, listen to that, again, that means they already did it. Should we again break thy commandments and join an affinity with the people of these abominations? Didn't he call Esau the people of my curse? 34th chapter of Isaiah, you know he did. Listen to the wisdom good. Wouldest not thou be angry with us till thou hast consumed us? That's the question. So that there should be no remnant nor escaping. Now see, our fathers, unlike us, who didn't even know who in the hell we were, they knew who they were and who the heavenly father was and how so he brings smoke upon your ass quickly so they're raising the question they're going through their process in their mental as to whether or not to to join an affinity with these people would be to break commandment again and they asking they're wondering posing the question of whether or not the heavenly father would get pissed off about that and consume their ass but you niggas, you ain't worrying about that, huh? You fixed it in your mind that because I guess you would like these heathen. I bet you niggas talk strong against them. If you talk so strong, heathen this, heathen that, heathen this, and two seconds later, they walking around with they stringy dog head asses in the midst of your congregation with Hebrews. Are you niggas insane? Scripture told you in uh, 12th chapter of uh, Hebrews, without uh, holiness, no man can see Hamashayak. So if you can't see him, you can't see the father. He is the door. Got to go walking through that door. You think he going to have heathen? He told you not to go into the way of the heathen. But you niggas say, oh, we didn't go the way of the heathen. We just brought the heathen to us. I understand. I'm listening. I am listening, brothers. Lay it on me. Let's go get some real, some more real-time accounts. Let's go get some accounts with Hamashayak. John in the fourth chapter. John 4. Let's go. This is a popular account in the scriptures, in the testimony of Hamashai that gets many twisted in their mind. Easy to get it, get it happening, get the understanding on it, though. John 4, woman at the well. Everybody knows about this. Let's see here where we're going to start. John 4, and we're going to start at... Uh, all right. It says now, uh, then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Shakar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Yahawashah therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. So this woman from Samaria, she thinks she can draw water out of the well. A he is she a heathen? Yahweh said unto her, Give me to drink. Commanded her ass. Now we know the father don't bear his rule over the heathen. He never bears rule over them. Hamashiach just commanded them, no. That's ruling over them. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, 
So she's not a Jew. What is she? Is she a heathen? Is she a Gentile? Ask it, drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Cool. Then it says, Yahweh shall answer her and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Yahweh and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Mm. Now the scripture said, you must believe on him as the scripture has said. Then shall flow living water. So can a heathen get living water? This woman saith unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with. And the well is deep from then, from whence then hast thou that living water she wants to know about. Art thou greater than our for our father? Hold on. She's talking to her, my shock, and she just asked him, art thou greater than our father? That's possessive, brother. which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? That's the question. Are you greater? She asking how much are you greater than our father? So she's saying to him, she got the same father as he do. Jacob that being. Hmm. How shall I answer and said unto her, Wheresoever drinketh of the water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. I'm listening, brothers. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come thither to draw. Yahweh answered and saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. How shall I say unto her, Thou hast said, Well, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. Is this a heathen, this woman of Samaria, talking about our father and us? And, the, and, and Hamashak is telling her he would have given her living water if she would have asked for it unto everlasting life. That's a woman of Samaria now. Is she not a Gentile? One way or the other. Either Gentile, Israel, she distinguished herself from Hamashiach as being Hamashiach was with the Jews. And they don't have no dealings with her, a woman of Samaria. So whether she's a Gentile of Israel or a Gentile of heathen, she is a Gentile. So the question becomes to you, brothers. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Did you hear it? Let's go over here to, uh, let's go over here to Acts. So, cause this thing was about this living water unto our eternal life. Let's go over here to Acts in the, uh, let's go over here to Acts in the 13th. Acts in the 13th. And listen to it real, real good. And it says, Acts 13 and 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, 
it was necessary that the word of the heavenly father should first have been spoken to you, the Jews. But seeing ye put it off from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So they turn into the white people. That's what you niggas are saying. By having them in your goddamn congregation, you perceive it to be, we spoke everybody with that bullshit about, we supposed to be a light unto the Gentiles, but we about to find out what Gentiles they are. Cause that's where you fucking up at. All right. It says, and when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. So these Gentiles that they turned to had been ordained to eternal life. When the hell you ever known a heathen to be ordained to eternal life by the Father? That's the question. Now, when we go to the first chapter, 15th chapter, excuse me, of first Corinthians and find out about, we shall be changed, putting off the corruptible and putting on the incorruptible. You niggas is by virtue saying that the white man and the China man and all these other motherfuckers are going to be changed. Cause you saying the Gentiles are these other nations are the white man and the China man and whoever in the hell else. So you also saying now they're going to get an incorruptible body. You are butchering the testimony. Whether you knew it or not, Leviticus in the fifth chapter say when we find out a thing after we have sinned, we shall be guilty because the law told us to do all of it. And we're going to get down on that, too. OK. See about this thing called uh, the notion of niggas thinking they some type of law keepers. Sorry if you want to believe that, but are you teaching that? That's the question. See that? So now we um we would imagine that you have gotten some edification, but we ain't done. We ain't done. If we can pull you niggas and keep you niggas away from all you uh viewers, away from uh love and hip hop long enough or empire or whatever in the hell else long enough to attend to this convening here. Ye may, might as well be edified that you got something better to do. Now we go over here to Isaiah about these servants and these handmaids, Isaiah in the 14th. So I hear that too. A lot of this bullshit about this servants and handmaids is a good thing. Okay. So it says, Isaiah 14. Where is this? Where is this? Isaiah 14 says, For the Lord Yahweh will have uh, mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers, these other nations, shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. That sound like salvation? Cause I hear it a lot, a lot of time. They, the, a lot of the, uh, the other nations are gonna be saved too. Don't be saying that out your mouth. They getting saved. This ain't what this is. This ain't a matter of Benson. You see that? Working in the governor's house, dressing nice, eating good. Not this kind of handmaidens, handmaids and hands and servants. And the people, these strangers, or oh, mean Israel, shall take them, these strangers, and bring these strangers to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. 
So the question the sister asked you, what do you have them in the congregation for? Let's say, well, let's deal with that. Cause you all sidestepped her, her, her questions. You wanted to deal with the testimony that she was giving about her daughter. That ain't what the hell she called you about. She didn't call you to tell you that she just went off into it to get, let you understand some of her vexation and what's behind it. But you conveniently went with that. You know, that's not why she called you. Now, to the notion that this might be, uh, cause it said and take them captives whose captives they were, what'd they do to us in captivity? Did they allow us to serve and, and partake in, uh, cold drinks? Enjoyable television programs. Is that what this was? I thought it was yokes of iron skin getting whipped off the backs. Ch children being uh, fed to, uh, to alligators. So because you niggas want to be with them heathen, you teach your people that's a part of your convenings that these other nations, you get hot, you get huffy with them when they ask your ass about it. You see that? You teach them that these are the nations that did all these gnarly things to them. Let's go over here and see what the what the wisdom of the scripture says. Isaiah 33. Listen to it good. It says, Woe to thee that spoilest and thou was not spoiled and dealest treacherously and they dealt not treacherously with thee when thou shalt cease to spoil stop spoiling thou shalt be spoiled the father don't give a goddamn And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, Israel shall deal treacherously with thee. Servants and handmaids again. What? Obadiah. Let's see what Obadiah says about the matter. Unless he a lie too. Because I guess everybody must be lying. Now it says here. Obadiah in the 15th, it says, it says, for the day of the Lord, Yahweh is upon all the heathen. Let me make sure I read that correctly and it didn't say some of them or the only the ones that you niggas wanted to be. It says, for as ye have, oh, excuse me, for the day of the Lord, Yahweh is near upon all all heathen said all brother just like the law said keep it all you break one you break them all because it said do it all but we're gonna get on that too it shall be done unto thee all the heathen as thou hast done so it just said the day of the lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done it shall be done unto thee. Is Obadiah a liar? Is that what you said? So why in the hell would these heathen who going to get this right here need to hear our word? It's a misunderstanding, brother. I'm going to say that. That's the least. I'm going I'm to chalk it up to that you all ain't wicked like these goddamn camps. And that you error because of ignorance. And that way, if you'll accept the reproof, which if you don't, you shall die, then you can be edified. Then you can go back and properly edify the congregation. And I'm going to be waiting for to hear this video where you make it known, because if you don't make it known and you keep that thing hidden, like David, ask him, King David, about trying to do his shit in secret. What the Lord tell him? You did your shit in secret. I'm going to do my shit in the open. Same thing. I've had to go before the congregation and I ain't even really make a mistake like that. I didn't lie on the scriptures. I just spake not as accurately as I could have in my ignorance. You can go check that out on Destroy Your Channel. Correction. I accepted correction. I rejoiced in correction. Therefore, I am not consumed. We're going to see what type of brothers you all are.
It says, for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain. Oh, no, let me go back. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. So servants and handmaids is not some cushy job with benefits. Unless Obadiah is a liar, unless Isaiah later on after the 14th so-called chapter in the 33rd said the father said he don't give a damn if you stop. When you cease to spoiling and dealing treacherously, it's you still going to be spoiled and dealt treacherously with. For as ye have drunk upon mine holy mountain, all the heathen shall drink continually. Yeah, they shall drink and they shall swallow down, brother. And they shall be as though they had not been. I think that says enough. There ain't no more. Ain't no more to be said. Stop having them fucking heathen in your congregation, brother. Stop trying to mute the sisters when they ask a question. Shalom, Israel. You understand that message.